Today we're showing you how you can use Rhino inside Revit to take some architectural information, this sample airport building, and then turn that into some structural models, stuff you can use for structural analysis, um, and you can also generate structural drawings from it, all by just using some automated components instead of doing everything manually. So, for example, our airport building there, I can extract some information, walls and edges of slabs, columns, etc. Then I can run it through a component and I can get I've just moved it here so you can see the difference. Floor outlines, columns, and slabs. And all that's rationalized and something you can use as a structural model. And of course, you can use that for analysis or I could even auto frame it out. and give it a few seconds, it'll create a framed out model, which you can generate drawings from as well. Okay, so here we've got a sample building in Revit. It's purely architectural, so you've got glazing, architectural floors, you've even got furniture and plants in there, railings, stairs, all sorts of stuff, windows. And we're going to take this purely architectural information and turn it into a structural model. So. We can do this with some of our components. If I go to Rhino Inside, which you can install, <clears throat> it's a free plugin. And the first thing you do, need to do, which I've already done prior, is just click Start Rhino. So that'll take a couple of seconds for it to start running. Then you can open up Rhino and Grasshopper, and it's all run within Revit. So Revit can interact. Uh, with Rhino directly and I'm going to <clears throat> load this script and I'll show you how it works so the first thing just a couple of components here and a few Revit um, Rhino inside Revit components used and that's under here if you haven't used Rhino inside Revit before, you get a Revit tab that only comes up when you load it through Revit. So what I'm doing here is I'm extracting that information, like I said. So um, that's the architecture. And if I turn on a preview of what this is extracting, you can see that... I'm grabbing the walls. I'm also grabbing the outline of the floors, which is us curves. And I'm grabbing any columns. So you can see these lines as columns. So I'll just quickly show you what's inside this component. And basically I've got columns. Um, well, this is actually floors. Um, I was just searching for something before there. Um, I've got the floor, floor curves, so it's extracted them. I've got the column curves, it's extracted all the columns. And these are all architectural, by the way, no structural. And it's extracting the floor, uh, the wall surfaces. And I've just, um, I'm just using the Revit Inside Rhino, <clears throat> Rhino Inside Revit, sorry, uh, components. So I'm just using filters getting their families, the family type, 
finding all the elements of that family. Then I'm getting the geometry of it. So that's the actual uh, rep or surfaces, etc. And then I'm doing a bit of processing, like just finding the edges and joining them together. <clears throat> and that gives me the floor curves, for example. Column curves are similar. I'm getting that geometry, which is a brep. You can see that, an architectural column. And I'm just turning it into a single line, which is a lot uh, simpler. And then similarly with walls, I just end up with the larger walls. I don't want the tiny little ones. And I'm just doing that by limiting. I've got a split here, so I'm limiting um, the maximum number of elements I want out because I don't want all the little tiny stuff. Just want that major elements for the structure. So I'll go out of that um, cluster now. And so I've extracted that info. So now that I've got that info, I'm putting it into a frame crafter, um, which you can find in the struct scripts toolbar there. And that is going to turn that into a structural, uh, a model suitable for structural analysis or for structural framing planning. So um, it creates the framing, and I've just moved it slightly away from the original structure so you can see um, what it extracts. That's the framing. Then you've got columns like we've shown before, and then the mesh is the walls. So it's taken that information there and turned it into that information there. And why this is suitable for structural engineers is that all the floors are flat and they're rationalized. So you've got distinct floor levels instead of half floor levels and things like that. Um, all the columns are from the correct from the floor level um, to floor level so continue um, not continuous but broken up so they don't stop and start in the wrong spot <clears throat> and beams um, uh, um, surround the floors correctly um, and create floor plates so that's what you want uh, for a structural analysis model. You're basically cleaning up things in the architecture, it doesn't matter, but structural, everything needs to be connected. Everything needs to be rationalized to floor heights. That's how the structural analysis programs work, like ETABs or space gas, etc., all these other, other types of things. So from there, you can, like I say, do a, a structural analysis. It also shows up in the Revit window, by the way. I'll just show you that. And that's a feature of Rhino inside Revit. So you can see the geometry there if you don't want to use the Rhino window. And for example, um, I'll just do a quick um, wind analysis. This is also in our struct script package. So if I just enable that, with our components, they just take a couple of seconds to run. Sometimes there's quite a bit of computation to be done. Oh, and also what I can do with this frame crafter is, so let me just turn off this auto wind for the moment and I can auto frame it. So I can use that in my lateral stability model. But to auto frame it, I can create a simplified framing system with floor and um, primary and secondary beams and a rationalized outline of the floor. So that's an even simpler model and everything's straight in this model. Uh, which some analysis programs prefer. Um, and obviously I can change the direction of the primaries and secondaries. I can change the spacing 
this the uh, spacing of the secondaries <clears throat> and etc. I can also um, extract the analysis file straight from that. But um, just to go back to the auto wind, you can see there. So if I turn off the other mesh you can see where the wind is hitting the various surfaces of the model. So blue is face on, purple is rear face, and the green yellow <clears throat> are the east and west, or the left and the right forces. And the output of that is the floor height where the wind load occurs and the um, vector of that force coming in uh, and this is set up so you can plug it into analysis packages like Karamba or Kiwi so you can take those outputs and that's ready to go for building an analysis model now another thing you can do is to quickly get a design from this framing so you know that the framings at the right secondary centers that you want the primaries are a max span that you've set uh, you can use another component like this composite designer which is in our toolkit uh, so if i enable this and again it's doing a lot of computation here there's about a, a couple of hundred beams i believe um, and it's working out <clears throat> a composite, composite design for each beam all in one hit. So let's just let it do its work. Okay, so there it's done that. So this has designed based on <clears throat> a commercial floor 120 thick deck all the beam designs for each floor primary and secondary and worked out the how many studs you need per beam and any pre-camber required looks like for this span it's not much pre-camber it's only eight meter centers so um, if I made the primaries a bit longer <clears throat> the secondaries even um, you probably get more pre-camber there, although there is some pre-camber in there. Now, um, so yeah, obviously a quick way to get a composite steel design of a building straight from architecture has taken me a few minutes. And I can take that design because I'm, in, I'm working with inside Revit here. I can just and just draw that straight into Revit without doing any manual drafting. And that's what I'm doing here in these last couple. These two are just cleaning up the name and then I'm finding the type of the beam that, are, that comes out of uh, our component, that's the design. And then um, using these two components which are in Revit, create a beam, create a column. So I'll just start off with columns. I'll just um, see if I can shrink down this. Yeah, that's better. So I've just got grasshopper. So as I create these beams, you can see them come in. Maybe if I just shrink this out of the way a bit. So like I said, I've moved it out of the way. So that's our frame. If I just bring the columns in for start, And then I enable that. This is um, Rhino inside Revit doing the work and it's created all those columns. And likewise, if I join up the beams and enable, it's going to create all the structural beams based on the sizing that's given by the design of that concrete composite designer does take a little while for Revit to draw all this stuff depending on the size of the building and how many how many beams it has to create 
Okay, there it is. So there's all the... Now I think I've got that... Um... Oops, I was missing a bit there, so yeah. There you can see all the beams completed. So now if I just go to... I've got the structural plans here, but um, I've got a sheet set up as well. Um, this is just the default title block, but you can see it's created a framing plan. I think this is level two. If I go into that, uh, manage, uh, sorry, annotate, and just size, um, annotate those beams, you can see the sizes have been assigned. Um, and all the primaries and secondaries have the correct uh, or in, um, you know, layout. So, uh, yeah. So there is a couple of columns um, that probably need to be cleaned up. Uh, it's not perfect uh, every time. It's quite a difficult task to do, but if it gets you 90% there, at least maybe more sometimes, depending on the building. But yeah, so basically I've taken an architectural model and created a structural framing design and drawing and plans in a couple of minutes. Um, so that's the aim of it. And like I said before, not perfect in every scenario, but we're always improving it. Um, and things like these couple of isolated columns, which will be here somewhere. You can either clean them up manually or over time we'll improve that to get it more accurate. Thanks for watching this structured parametrics video. Leave a like or subscribe if you found this useful and we'll see you in the next one.